Good morning. Welcome to this service of morning prayer on the 17th Sunday after Pentecost. It's September, the season of misty mornings and golden afternoons. I'd like to say a special hello today to those residents who are watching from Riverwood and also to Jessica who to thank her for organizing this and setting it up so that you can watch us every week. We really miss coming to see you and to share communion with you. But this is the next best thing. So welcome. And welcome to everyone else, wherever you're watching me from today. And let's begin. My sheep, hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. The Lord is our light and life. O oh, come, let us worship. May Christ, the only true light, banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. O oh, Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. All your works praise you, O oh Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and seek forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. Jesus said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, creator of all, to you be praise and glory forever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, may we rejoice in this day you have made. As we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night is past, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. And as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 2. Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Any comfort from his love? Any fellowship together in the Spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another and working together with one mind and purpose. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. 
Though he was God, he didn't think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on the cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Dear friends, you always followed my instructions when I was with you, and now that I am away, it is even more important. Work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm is Psalm 78. O oh, my people, listen to my instructions. Open my ears to what I am saying. For I will speak to you in a parable. I will teach you hidden lessons from our past. Stories we have heard and known, stories our ancestors handed down to us. We will not hide these truths from our children. We will tell the next generation about the glorious deeds of the Lord, about his power and his mighty wonders. For he divided the sea and led them through, making the water stand up like walls. In the daytime he led them by a cloud, and all night by a pillar of fire. He split open the rocks in the wilderness to give them water, as from a gushing spring. He made streams pour from the rock, making the waters flow, flow down like a river. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus returned to the temple and began teaching, the leading priests and elders came up to him. They demanded, By what authority are you doing all these things? Who gave you the right? I'll tell you by what authority I do these things. If you answer one question, Jesus replied, Did John's authority to baptize come from heaven, or was it merely human? They talked it over among themselves. If we say it was from heaven, he will ask us, Why didn't you believe John? But if we say that it was merely human, we'll be mobbed because the people believed John was a prophet. So they finally replied, We don't know. And Jesus responded, Then I won't tell you by what authority I do these things. But what do you think about this? A man with two sons told the older boy, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. The son answered, No, I won't go. But later he changed his mind and went anyway. Then the father told the other son, you go. And he said, yes, sir, I will. But he didn't go. Which of the two obeyed the father? They replied, the first. Then Jesus explained his meaning. I tell you the truth. Corrupt tax collectors and prostitutes will get into the kingdom of God before you do. For John the Baptist came and showed you the right way to live, but you didn't believe him, while the tax collectors and prostitutes did. And even when you saw this happening, you refused to believe him and repent of your sins. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. The leading priests and Jewish elders approached Jesus and interrupted him and asked, By what power do you do these things, and who granted you the authority to teach here? Verse 23 from Matthew 21. Jesus didn't answer immediately, but counteracted with another question. Why do you think he did that? People often do it when they don't want to answer a question, don't they? And that is true here. But Jesus wasn't just stalling for the sake of stalling. He was listening to his Father God and working on his timing. We've seen examples of this over and over again as we have followed his ministry. When he said to the leper, Don't tell anyone I've healed you. And when he said to Simon Peter, Don't tell anyone that I am the Messiah. It wasn't the right time to profess that he was the Son of God and to acknowledge where he got his authority. The time was getting close, though. Jesus had made his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, riding in peace on the donkey. He's overturned the tables of the money changers in the temple and told them that it was to be a house of prayer. The priests and elders have been trying to trap Jesus with many questions along his journey. They were envious of Jesus' power and authority when he preached and of the way the crowds followed him. So in this account they asked the question, who granted you authority? The question that Jesus countered with was about John the Baptist. What do you think of him? Was he a man of God and who gave him authority, he asked them. They'd seen John baptizing in the River Jordan. In fact, they'd accused him of being demon-possessed because of the way he lived in the wilderness and dressed in sackcloth. That had caused a big pushback from the people and here the Jewish leaders were again surrounded by by fans of both John and Jesus. So after conferring with themselves, they answered that they didn't know whether John was a man of God or not. They chose this answer because, as we might say, they were between a rock and a hard place. They were acting out of fear of the crowd's reaction. They didn't want to incite a riot among those who believed John received his authority from God. They were waiting for the right time to overturn Jesus and his leadership. But they were not waiting on God's timing like Jesus was. They were waiting for a time when the crowd was not full of supporters of Jesus and John. Because then they would be assured of a victory. Jesus, of course, knew they were avoiding the truth. And this caused him to tell the parable about the two sons whose father asked them to go and work in the vineyard. One son said he would go and do the work, but didn't. And the other one said he would go. He wouldn't go, but then he had second thoughts and went and completed the job. Neither of these sons were perfect. Neither acted respectfully towards the father, but one was eventually obedient. The sons in this parable represented two groups, the Jewish leaders and the prostitutes and sinners. The leaders said they would obey God, but they didn't. And the prostitutes and sinners were living their own way, but believed and turned to God in the end. The Jewish leaders would have recognized themselves in this parable as the first son who promised to go to work in the vineyard, but didn't. We've all met people like these two sons, haven't we? Those who loudly promise to do everything and then don't follow through and the work isn't done. And then there are those who quietly do the work without promising. One day you find the work all done beautifully and we are very thankful. 
Though neither one is perfect, at the end of the story, it's the obedience that pleases God. Let's come back to authority for a moment. Have you ever been asked on whose authority are you doing this? Eleven years ago, I felt that people might be asking that of me, and I was certainly asking it of myself. It was when I was first invited out of the comfortable pew that I'd been sitting in for almost 40 years to become a lay reader and to preach. Believe me, it wasn't anything that I'd considered or planned. This was long before there was any thought of me becoming a deacon. Around this time, I'd also been invited by friends to attend a healing service at the Pentecostal Church. And as I went forward for prayer, the pastor received a vision and words of knowledge for me that I would serve God in ministry. That was encouraging, but I still wondered. As I've continued on my spiritual journey, I've learned that we've all been given authority from God to do the work he has planned specifically for each one of us. But we have to claim it and step forward in obedience to do it. Here's a verse in Matthew 28, verse 18, where we see this. Jesus said, all authority is given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Here, Jesus is claiming his power from God and passing it to his disciples to go and make other disciples. They were to be witnesses, to heal, to teach, to preach, and to make known God's love and compassion. And so, here we have it our authority from Jesus to go into action, not just promise to do something and then turn and go off in another direction like the son in the parable. God wants us, those he loves and has chosen, to be obedient to him, to follow through, to do the work he's planned for each one of us, to love, to pray, to be compassionate, to shine God's light into the darkness of people's troubles. And we are to do it in his power and authority. And in fact, that is the only way we can do it. In the words of the doxology, God's power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Amen. Now, let's confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now come to our prayer time, so I invite you to take a moment of quiet and just experience God's presence around you as we pray. In peace, let us pray to Jesus our Lord, who ever lives to make intercession for us. Saviour of the world, be present in all places of suffering, violence, and pain, and bring hope even in the darkest night. Inspire us to continue your work of reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the Church, empower by your Spirit all Christian people and the work of your Church in every land. 
Give us grace to proclaim the gospel joyfully in word and deed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shepherd and guardian of our souls, guide and enable all who lead and serve in this community. Rick Milne and the Council, Reverend Kim, our parish priest, and the wardens of St. Andrew, and all those on whom we depend for our daily needs. Grant that we may seek the peace and welfare of this area. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Great physician, stretch out your hand to bring comfort, wholeness and peace to all who suffer in body, mind or spirit. I invite you now to name those who are on your hearts this morning. We remember those who are lonely in hospital, in care homes, and in their own homes. Fill us with compassion that we may be channels of your healing love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Conqueror of death, remember for good those whom we love but see no longer. Help us to live this day in the sure and certain hope of your eternal victory. Let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered by your Holy Spirit into one, may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So this concludes the service this morning. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a good week. Stay safe. Stay in touch with each other. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.